this video to encourage married couples to become sensitive to your spouse's heart. I want to talk a little bit about what God has taught me about respecting my husband when it comes to um, socializing or having friends with the opposite gender. Jesus has taught me that it's extremely disrespectful to be friends with someone of the opposite gender. There's no reason for married couples to have friends that they hang out with who are of the opposite gender. Now, I will say that if if a couple, a married couple, is seeking Jesus and they know someone else who is seeking Jesus, which honestly is very rare because there's so few who are seeking him, but let's just say that there were two couples, um, then I can understand that if they were in the same room, you know, they could fellowship together and, you know, just share in the Lord together and, um, just talk amongst each other, but Jesus would never have me sit in a room, you know, with a married man alone, or a single man for that matter. Um, I mean, obviously there's situations where, where I have to be in a room, like let's just say a waiting room in a doctor's office, or um, the dentist's waiting room, or, you know, something like that, or, you know, if I have to talk to, to a cashier that's a male, or, you know, deal with a waiter that's a male or you know that kind of thing but I'm talking about like common sense I would not put myself in a situation to where I would be in a room alone with a man because I'm a married woman and it would be just it would be wrong like I could feel God's heart grieving over that if that were to take place um I used to have friends uh that were males like when I was married like years ago I did and because I was I was the girl who grew up around guys so like most of my friends were guys and I just didn't really have that deep understanding of how it was disrespectful towards my husband I mean I knew that it was wrong like I I could feel God grieving in that time but I didn't fully understand because I wasn't even seeking Jesus I wasn't sensitive to his heart so like if I was having a conversation with a male um to me at that time it didn't seem like such a big deal but it is a big deal because there's no point <laughs> there's no point in keeping friendships um that could cause strife in a marriage or friendships that that could cause the other spouse to feel um threatened or to feel jealous or envious or anything that would get in the way of the relationship of, of the husband and wife. Um, I mean, Jesus has just taught, taught it to me this way that there really is no point in being friends with the opposite gender. I mean, why, why would someone want to, let's just say, like, why would a husband want to open up his heart to another woman, you know, when that's his wife's role, job, duty, and it should be natural for him to want to open up to her and not some stranger. I'll put up some scriptures just to back this message up um, with God's written word. And Jesus has also taught me that having friendships with the opposite gender also is 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 in that verse that talks about don't let man separate what God has put together. I mean, if if you're bringing in friends and that are of the opposite gender, you are separating from your wife or from your husband in spirit. In a sense, you are because it's it's. I mean, it is adultery. Even though, let's just say, you're talking to someone and you think that it's that it's harmless because you're not meeting up with them and being promiscuous in that way, but it is harmful because 
um, you can still grow a emotional attachment to that person, which will affect your marriage. So, um, I just know that I know so strong that Jesus is not leading people to be friends with the opposite gender um, and to have their own like friendship where you know the wife isn't invited to go hang out with them or the 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 husband isn't invited or it's just it's a dis it's so disrespectful when single men and women get around other single men and women i mean naturally some of them and are looking for love they're looking for the lifetime partner they're looking for someone that they can confide in and grow close to they're looking for a mate they're looking for their mate someone that they can enjoy life with um and grow close to and bond with and eventually marry i mean that's just human nature so that's why it makes no sense for a married woman to be friends with men and a married man to be friends with women because they're already married they already have the partner um that god has given them that god has blessed them with so there's there's no reason for them to be seeking out an emotional attachment with someone else you can definitely expect that if married men are friends with a lot of females that they're not happy in their marriage i mean that's just the truth because if they were happy um they wouldn't need the female friends they would just be confiding in their wife they would be sensitive to their wife's heart um they wouldn't even have the desire to speak to other women they would be going to their wife for all things they would want to share all of their joy and dreams and thoughts and desires with their wife and this goes for um women too like i see this a lot in the world and it really makes me sad because just the other day i was actually having a conversation with someone who asked me um if i hung out with friends and you know, I, I I said, well, I hang out with my husband. Um, I just don't know anybody around here that is seeking Jesus. So I really, I don't have fellowship in person with women because I don't know anyone else that's seeking Jesus. And my friends before that, that I was hanging out with before I found God, they were alcoholics and they were promiscuous um, people who were unfaithful in their own marriages, they weren't, they weren't, um, they weren't good role models for me. They, so, once I sought Jesus with all my heart and repented and fully came to know and love him, I broke off my relationships with my friends that were women and, um, as I grew in God's knowledge and understanding and in his heart, I cut off all my friendships with men, even with those whom I, I had known online for like 15 years, um, even people that I went to school with, you know, that I had known for like 20 years, I broke off all those relationships because there's no point. There's no point. I'm, I'm a married woman. I'm a happily married woman. And everything that I want to share like my heart about, I run to my husband and I run to Jesus. Um, so there's no need. Like, I have no desire whatsoever to be friends with men at all. And I don't have any desire to be friends with um, women who aren't seeking Jesus because I there's we wouldn't have anything in common. Like, because because of the the way the world is i mean it's like the way the carnal mind is is it's focused on self it's focused on the flesh and it's focused on sin and wicked and evil things so like and and vain conversations about like um the latest you know hollywood films or you know whatever like i i don't even talk about that stuff i'm 
I'm so spirit-minded and so spirit-led that um, my fellowship is between God's sheep. So somebody asked me the other day if I hang out with people. And, you know, I said, no, I hang out with my husband. Um, we do everything together. He's my best friend. And this person thought it was strange. And so, I mean, I noticed that there are a lot of people who think it is strange. Um, that my husband and I don't hang out with other people. We just, we hang out with each other. Because when he's away from, at work, all I can do is think about him. And whenever I leave, like if I take my son driving, and I'm teaching him how to drive right now, so if I take my son out driving or go to the store or whatever, my husband misses me too. So we actually hurt when we're not in each other's presence. And we do everything together. I mean, we could sit down and do nothing and be having fun just being in, in each other's presence. Um, but we're best friends. So it's not strange to just hang out with each other and not have like other people that we hang out with. We like to paint together, we play instruments, um, we laugh, we talk, we cook together, we can together. We have a lot of fun together, we really do. We run together. We just, we have so much fun together that we don't even desire to have friends. Now, if, let's just say, if there was a woman that lived near me who was seeking Jesus, like if, if I knew God's sheep around me, then I would like to fellowship with a woman. I have my husband to fellowship with, and I have Jesus to fellowship with. And, yeah, and we're happy. So it's just, it to me, it's it's really weird when when I tell people this and they look at me like, don't doesn't your husband get on your nerves or don't you get on his nerves you know or don't you guys just need a break from each other you know that kind of thing and it's like gosh I feel really bad for a lot of people because no like we actually enjoy hanging out together we do get breaks from each other because he works throughout the day so we're not near each other during that time um and if there is like I'm not saying that we don't ever have time alone I'm, I'm taking time right now to do this so he's not here with me now, but I miss him. <laughs> I do. Like when I'm done with this video, I'm going to go see what he's up to and jump on his lap and say, hey, what you doing? So, I mean, <laughs> I just love being around him. So it's not weird to me. And that's what Jesus wants. He wants couples to be like that. He wants them to, to be friends and to miss each other when the other is gone and to want to hang out together. So that's normal. That's what's normal. Having friends of the opposite gender and being out and all hours of the night and hanging out with single people, you know, hanging out with people who are married but promiscuous, that's not normal. That is not normal. And if you guys have relationships like that, cut them off. That's wise, to cut them off because they will just cause you problems. They will cause drama in your own marriage. You will begin to see strife in your marriage, um, jealousy, envious, um, bitterness, resentment, all kinds of stuff can work up if you're doing those things. Those things are wicked and selfish and worldly. Nobody who is seeking to have a healthy, happy marriage will continue to do those things and they will not continue to partake in conversations they shouldn't be a part of and they won't be seeking the attention of other males or females when they got a husband or a wife at home so just take that into consideration and really seriously start to change these things in your life if you have these things going on get rid of them as soon as possible and now I will say that Jesus does lead me to counsel people and during discipleship. Jesus will lead men to sometimes write me and ask me for marriage counsel or ask me for, you know, whatever other type of counsel. Like I've had men ask me about how to overcome alcoholism or drugs because they've seen my videos. So obviously, um, I'm going to write them back, but it's always going to be in, the, in God's leading and timing. And I give them his counsel 
and then I'm out of there. You know, like, I don't continue talking because there's no, there's no point in continuing to chit-chat. You know what I mean? It's like, um, and I do keep that information confidential. You know, I, I don't blurt everything out that people share with me. It's between God, them, and me. But I'm saying this to make a point. Like, if my husband were to ever feel uncomfortable, um, he knows that I have nothing to hide. So he could read all my emails and see that that's that all I'm doing is counseling. So like, there's no place or no um, no reason to be worried about me being unfaithful. So like. I have nothing to hide. And this is one thing that I've noticed a lot um, in the world and in, uh, I want to say in like religious communities, people who claim to love Jesus, but who aren't really loving him, but they claim to. Um, let's just say like online, like in social media, I see a lot of corresponding going on and, and flirting. I see a lot of unhealthy flirtatious communication going on between married people and single people like on social media whether it could be like um, someone posting a photo and then someone else coming on there and flirting or maybe somebody just posted something and there's men and women having conversations um, you know that they shouldn't be having and it's like they're shameless to even have this open sin in front of everybody it's like i just see that a lot of people aren't respecting their spouses because they're not sensitive to their spouse's heart and they're really not drawing near to their spouse and they're not close they're not friends they're not being the husband or wife that jesus called them to be so they're their tongues are loose and they're having all sorts of conversations without even praying about it, without being led by the Spirit of God. And this happens between like religious people too. I see it all the time um, where there could be like a married man who is who posting something and a married woman will come on there and say things to, that appear as encouragement, but I see right through it. It's not encouragement, it is flirting and it's just the way that they would say things or because then it's just this continual like you can see this favoritism sometimes um between male and female friends online to where it's just it's not right because either one of them's married you know or engaged or whatever and it's just it's not god's will for people to be so flighty like that and it's just really disrespectful and um like my husband hasn't had any female friends gosh since like since we were married I, I mean he he used to have like female friends from high school and stuff but he hasn't had any female friends since we were married and we've been married for almost 20 years now so and i remember asking him like a long time ago I mean, I didn't really think it was a big deal, you know, like maybe 15 years ago or something. I remember asking him, you know, like, how come you don't have any female friends? And he would say, well, what's the point? There's no reason for me to have any female friends when I've got you, you know, because the only reason why men have female friends is because they're either not happy in their marriage, you know, or they're looking to get married or to be with some with, with her so it's like it made perfect sense um so then you know later on i obviously cut off friendships with men they weren't real friendships i mean it was like it because it wasn't built on god's heart it was um vain carnal ships <laughs> that's what it was i mean it was worldly it was evil because like the conversations just it it was they were dead conversations i mean i just remember i remember that i i actually was hit on a lot by um married men and single men and looking back now i have the discernment that they were like talking to me 
um, because they weren't just interested in me as a friend. Now I have that discernment um, because Jesus shares it, that discernment with me. I can tell when I'm being approached in holiness or with a carnal mind or with you know evil motives by a man. I just I just can't. Jesus just shares that with me. And then there's people who have approached me um, saying things to me publicly and privately, like sending me messages who are men who sometimes are ignorantly doing so and not meaning any harm by it. So then Jesus has, has led me to um, teach them how to talk to a married woman and just explain how you don't talk to a married woman and like that message um, grieved God because of this or that or sometimes he would just have me explain it and some of the men would get offended but I do that out of the respect of my own husband, my marriage, and God um, because <laughs> there's no way that I want to send any type of message to my husband um, that I'm talking to men that he needs to worry about um, worry about me because I'm so in love with my husband he's everything to me he fulfills all my desires and needs and he's my best friend and <sighs> he's my life and there's no way there's no way that I would ever want to jeopardize that that I would be a fool I would be a fool to do that um, God has blessed me so much with my husband and it just grieves my heart that I've seen a lot of people disrespecting their spouses and it could either be like ignorantly you know not willfully s saying certain things or just having a certain communication or language to people to the opposite gender but I just hear God saying like if people were seeking him they would know what is right and wrong to say they would know the right and wrong way to approach a woman if it's a man and and women would know the right and wrong way to approach a man if it's a woman that's talking like they would just know because when somebody is sensitive to Jesus and and taking their marriage vows seriously and when they're sensitive to their spouse's heart their love for their spouse and for God naturally becomes their language so like it would it would be their love for God and their spouse becomes their speech and so um, there wouldn't be perverted speech there wouldn't be someone just um, loosely with their tongue just getting into all kinds of conversations just because and they wouldn't be talking about carnal things and trying to impress you know other people and trying to um, gain attention from someone other than their spouse like that's just not God's way that's just not his heart that's just not his sheep's heart um, like I'm very prayerful in all the conversations that I have especially especially with men because I know that if I'm to counsel them I give them counsel and then that's it there's nothing else like and and I tell them like sometimes just out of the kindness of their heart and and just because they're they're not willfully trying to um disrespect me or my marriage or God sometimes that I've had men that I've counseled will like write me and say so how are you you know like wanting to chit chat and I'm just like I don't do that so I'll just kindly tell them I don't chit chat like I give you godly counsel and that's it if you want to chit chat, go chit chat with your wife. <laughs> um, so I mean, and I make it very, very, very clear um, that they need to respect their wife and not have loose conversations like that with just any female and with just anyone. Like they need to be prayerful with every word that they speak. There's just very few people who are setting the example of being a godly spouse. And that's what Jesus has called me to do. He is leading me to make these videos to help teach women and men 
how to be a godly spouse and how to love God and how to love your spouse with all your heart and how to take their hearts into consideration in all things that you do with your life, you know, with your um, friendships, with your work, the job place, the workplace. Like, I, I know there's a lot of people who are married who are hiding secrets, who have friends at work. Um, I've just, I've seen this, and people have, have written me about things like this. And I remember what it's like to work. I used to work. I used to be this career woman. was so all into that, and I had a business, um, my own business, and I had a, an office job. And there was a lot of flirtation going on um, between everybody, like there was. And this was like, this was years ago. This was before, way before I was born again. But there, there were married men that would just walk up to me and just start talking and ask me for my number. And then um, I would see married men and women flirting with other people's spouses and single people flirting. I mean, it happens, you guys. It really does. And, I mean, it's, it's sad that this world is not respecting other people's marriage, let alone their own marriages. Because if they were, they would be seeking God's heart and to know what is right and wrong and about friendships and about conversations and just about communicating with people. Um, but you just, it's sad to say that that's, that's how the world is. It's, it's evil, it's wicked, it's selfish. There's not very many people who are putting their spouses, um, wants, needs, and desires, and heart before their own. So there's a lot of people who are walking in marriage not expecting to make it their entire life but who are treating it like part of their life you know I just I feel bad for the spouses who are being neglected and Jesus does too and we want to fight for your guys's marriage we want to help you guys to overcome the flesh and temptation to overcome lust and you know all these different temptations that the devil throws at married people every day and that's why I'm making these videos because I love you guys and I love marriage and I'm so passionate about it because it's my life because my husband is my life it's what I know and <laughs> Jesus is what I know too so I'm very passionate about Jesus and my marriage and I want to help you guys to get to that place too because love, God's love, is so beautiful and love between two people who God has put together, two people who are in a covenant marriage is so beautiful and that's what this life is all about. It's about God's love. I mean, marriage is so huge. It's such a big deal to Jesus. If it wasn't, he wouldn't have talked about it so much and have compared his relationship with the church, which is his people, to the concept of marriage. That's how important marriage is to Jesus. Because if one part of the marriage is suffering, if one, if, if one spouse's heart is being neglected, then they're suffering and God is grieving for that couple and for that that spouse who's being neglected i mean marriage is a beautiful gift that deserves your praise worship in spirit and in truth your spouse is a beautiful gift that deserves your respect so i just say this to you guys in love really Examine your heart if you have relationships that you know you shouldn't be having because God is telling you that you shouldn't be having them If you're keeping secrets from your wife or your husband if you're texting people or emailing people or having lunch with people at your workplace and you think Well, my wife or my husband's not here and they're not gonna know what what they don't know won't hurt them Think again because God is watching and it's hurting Jesus and you will answer to him for that rebellious behavior, you will. So Jesus desires for you to take this time to examine your heart and truly dig deep and find out 
what you can be doing differently, how you can be treating your wife or your husband differently, what you can be doing to help edify him or her, to lift them up, to encourage them every day in the Lord, and um, to, to make them feel like the most beautiful or handsome man on the planet. My advice to you guys, cut off the relationships with the opposite gender, cut them off, and spend more time with your spouse, growing in love and friendship with him or her, and watch how your marriage can blossom into a beautiful example of God's love, and draw near to Jesus, and ask him for counsel on how to be the God-fearing husband or God-fearing wife and how to learn how to respect your spouse and become that example that this world so desperately needs, you guys. This world needs marriages who are going to teach the world what true love is and what purity and holiness is. There is so few people who are doing that. And, I mean, I can count on one hand how many people I personally know who are striving to be the selfless, loving, pure spouse and, and faithful spouse. I, I just, there's so few, and it's really sad. It's really sad because marriage is such a beautiful thing. And this world is so blessed to even have marriage come down to it. Jesus came in the flesh. He came down to this earth to find love. And he wants to share in that love with his people. And he wants so much to teach married couples on how to, um, how to love each other and how to help strengthen each other when one is weak, the other one is strong, and just how to build God's kingdom on earth with their marriage. That's that's the whole point too. If you seek Jesus on how to build your marriage in his ways, then you will be building God's kingdom and people will be able to look at your marriage and say, "Wow. Okay, there is something supernatural about these two. You know, they they love each other, they respect each other. You know, they're just people will see that you walk in the law and love of Jesus if you really truly strive to do that. It's such a blessing, and then just to, um, because your marriage in itself can be a testimony to teach people how to love their spouses, and it has the power, your marriage can have the power to save souls and to save other people's marriages just by being and setting the example of a holy spouse. So I just want to encourage you to draw near to Jesus and really examine what you're doing at work, examine the relationships you're having, and cut off all unhealthy relationships, and you will see, you will see how much it will affect your spouse, and how you guys can grow closer together. Because this, this is a person who is going to be with you till death. All those other people, they're not watching you, um, live every day. They're not helping you when you're sick. They're not serving you. They're not loving you the way that your spouse is intended to love you, is supposed to be loving you. They're just, they're just distractions. They're, they're, they're sent by Satan to try and destroy your marriage. So don't take his bait. I love you guys. Um, just Draw near to God and, and to your spouses. God bless.